But let's, we pray that you'll live to be a hundred or till Jesus comes or more. One thing about it, I preached a funeral a while back, and they were a hundred and one. And the dear lady, she made a comment to me, used to be her pastor. She said, if I could just live to be 95. And that was back in the 90s when I was in there. But she got to be 95, and she said, boy, if I could just live to 96. She died at 101, and she said, if I could just live to see 102. You never want to die. Amen? Right. Live as long as you want to can live. But just, just, just assume, God forbid, that we live life expectancy in the age of 80. Now you give this a thought. How many of us will be in eternity in 10 years? 15 years? 20 years? I don't know about you, but I've been doing this what I'm doing now for 18 years and literally it seems like it's just been a couple of years ago. Where do the years go? And if I do this 18 more years it seems like I've just been doing it, I'll be 77. My God, y'all still gonna have me to revive. I promise you that if you have me when I'm 77, I'll still sweat like hell and I'll haul it out. Is that a deal? Amen. Well, you see, they've seen our religion, but no relationships. They've witnessed our beautiful buildings, but when they come, there's no bonding. They hear about our work. But there's no worship. They even know about our legalism. But there's no love. They come to many of our churches and they hear a bunch of arguing. But there's no acceptance. They see on Facebook and other means of social media our gossiping. But there's no glory. They hear our backbiting downtown. But they see no need meeting. They go to our homes. We open our refrigerator and they notice our bottles. But they see no Bible. They hear on the golf course <laughs> our profanity. But they hear very little praise. They see us at the boats with our gambling. And there's no genuineness. And we wonder, where is the glory of God? Again, I know I'm preaching literally figuratively to the choir tonight, but it burns my heart. Amen. Because I'm convinced we could solve much of our unrest and problems in the church if we would stop doing business with our heads and with our hands and start doing business with our hearts.
Christian history in our nation. And you are aware there have been four spiritual awakenings since the birth of our nation. All, or each of the four, occurred within 50 or 60 years of one another. You and I are part of a generation that has the dubious distinction of going longer than any other generation without seeing the passion of God. The last one was around 1900 to 1980 or 10. We've gone over a century. In the second great awakening, Kentucky was the frontier then. The Second Great Awakening was held in the later 1790s, early 1800s. As I said, Kentucky was as far west as they came at that time. And I was reading excerpts from a journal of a Presbyterian preacher in Logan County, Kentucky. This happened in 1799, recorded. And it said, and I quote, he said, the winter of 99 was weeping and mourning of the people of God. In the spring of 1800, the national movement of God broke out. what then was America. You see, the key to the glory of God and revival is for God's people to mourn and to weep. There was a day when the altar was filled with men and women who poured out tears on behalf of their need to Let me close. It says when they mourn that they also strip themselves of their ornaments. Sometimes the blessings of God can be misused and abused. What was intended to be God's blessing, the spoils of Egypt, they misused them and abused them. They became their gods. God said, if we're faithful over little, He will bless with much. But if we're unfaithful with much, He will bless with little. They were unfaithful with the blessings of God. You say, well, where are you going with that, Brother Jim? In closing, <coughs> we have an awesome responsibility never to misuse and abuse the blessings of God. All right. <clears throat> and repentance requires an about face. It's a militant word in the Bible. Metanoi in the Greek means to turn around. It was, it was used in the military. It still is. And when one turns around, completely repents, heads the opposite direction, heads toward God, then one must remove that temptation that he or she repented of, lest you fall back into that same sin. Now let me give you something right here for what it's worth. There's enough power in the blood to save whosoever. To Amen. Amen. That's right. If Charles Manson would get on his knees and cry out for forgiveness and salvation, God would save him. Amen. A pedophile serves his time gets saved in jail, is released, registered as a pedophile, and comes to your church saved, born again. Do you believe God forgave him? Amen. Amen. And by the law of God, we receive him in. 
well, this is important. You don't put him as the coordinator of your person. That's right. Or children. Not that you're judging him, but you don't put him back into that temptation. An alcoholic gets saved, is sober, and stays on the wagon. You don't offer to him any position that would tempt him in any way to go back into that lifestyle. That's right. And on and on we could go. They stripped themselves because they realized what they had turned into their curse. They were not worthy to wear that jewelry. They repented. Would you bow your heads tonight? We well, thank you for your presence. We thank you for your attentiveness. Man, you've sat right there tonight and you absorbed this, you looked, and you were following the word, following me, and I appreciate that with all of my heart. I just wanted to pour out my heart to you tonight because I love you. And I'd recommend Bethel Number One Church to any preacher anywhere I go. To anyone passing by, this would be the church that I would recommend. But even the best of our fellowship, the sweetness of our spirit, the number of our crowds, the receipts of our budget, even in all of this, we're head above heels than most of the other churches in Cleveland County. We still all would agree tonight that we still fall short. And we would desire to see God do it again as He's done in the past. Now there may be somebody here, Lord, tonight that doesn't know you personally. They may be under conviction even before they walked into the sanctuary tonight. Maybe they've been here earlier in the week, Father. And you've been dealing with them tonight. Father, I plead with them I plead that they'd let go tonight and just walk down this aisle and come to Brother John as these others have this week and say, Brother John, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. But would you help me? I want to get completely right with God. And I want to know the Lord. In just a moment, we're going to give you that opportunity to come down to do that when the invitation begins. But right now, for the rest of us, I want you to really look at somebody. If you believe this, I want you to find somebody in your church here tonight. Move about, find several. But if you really believe this, I want you to resolve and become accountable to some other people in your church and really join with them and say, we're going to trust God. And we're going to believe that the best days of Bethel number one are still ahead of us, not behind us. We believe the glory of God is in this place. Would you do that tonight? Do you believe it deep down in your heart that you've got the best church that God has? I do a sermon and I got the title from Swallowing Hook, Line, and Sinker Going to Revival of Oklahoma one Saturday evening. Put out a bunch of signs and they, they detoured. I, I fell for it and I detoured off the beaten path. I went down the road and they jumped out and it was a tool sale. But the signs that they used to attract us, to get me, the sign said, There's no place like this place. And when I followed the air and kept going and saw the sign a couple of other times and made two or three turns, I came upon it in the billboard right there in the country down at 
dim old top row, it said there's no place like this place anywhere near this place, so this must be the place. Well, they joked about it. I fell for it. Told them I didn't need any tools, but they gave me a good title to a sermon. Can I say this to you good people tonight? Do you really believe this is the place? There's no place like this place anywhere near this place, so this must be the place. Do you believe in your pastor and your church? Are you glad that you're a part of this fellowship? Do you believe the better days are still ahead? If there's somebody that needs to be saved tonight, I want you to march right on down here. We want to help you. But the rest of you, you find somebody and just become accountable and say, I believe we're going to have better days ahead of us than we've ever had. In Jesus' name. Will you bow your heads as you stand and your heads are bowed? Karen's going to play. We're not even going to sing. As she begins to play, Brother John standing here, if you need to come to him about any matter, especially if you need to be saved tonight, you come right now. The rest of you move about. Move about in the pew. Come out of the pew. Now don't get bogged down where you're standing at. If you got folks next to you, they'll let you out. Find somebody here tonight. Believe that God is here in this place. And that the best days are still ahead. Find those people. Amen. We must be accountable to one another. We must believe in one another. God, would you return your glory back to us? Father, can we get back to mourning a little bit, to weeping a little bit, crying over our sins, sick soul, and our sin sick community and country and nation. I believe with all my heart the fabric that's kept America together and the knees that are bent around this nation of believers that still love Jesus. Still pray. Pray for the leadership of our country. Pray for decisions that are upcoming imminently in our communities nation and government. Got time to slip out and find somebody, somebody else?
And it frustrates me when I look at myself in the mirror and say, John, you've been slipping. God never slept. He don't slip. This old guy, he slips. And he slides away. And he gets distracted. He gets off focus. But God, he never gets off focus. Mm -hmm. Best days are ahead of us. Amen. 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 Souls are going to be saved. Not just a few. I pray for the hundreds and by the thousands. Amen. That's what we can do with the Lord's help in Bethel number one. <laughs> when we work together as a church, as a body of believers, called out to carry out the Great Commission. Praise God. I praise God for you. I praise God for your faithfulness. I praise God that you serve in Him. I thank you so much for being here. Pray for one another. Pray for our community. Amen. Can we do that? Amen. Love you. I love you. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. And ask for His guidance. Pray for another wonderful night tomorrow. Be in prayer for tomorrow's services. Be in prayer for those that are traveling tonight. Those that are trying to make it back here. Those that are trying to going to be heading out. Pray for them. Lift them up in prayers. Yeah, you